Hello. Thank you, chairpersons, uh, for this generous introduction of mine. Thank you. And at the outset, I thank Dr. Bansi Bhai and all the team of DICON for inviting me to this beautiful uh, conference. Uh, you have just listened to a br brilliant lecture by Dr. Mangesh Tivaskar uh, regarding the, the very specific uh, Indian subsets of the diabetes. But what I'll be talking is little different that what day to day mistakes or errors we are committing uh, may be voluntary, involuntary or uh, any type. So that is very, very important to know uh, these inadvertent sort of uh, mistakes which we are doing on a day to day basis. Uh, and sometimes this is a uh, this may have the serious implications for the public and the, for the patients also. So, my disclosures, nothing is very special for this particular thing. So, what is important thing here is the medication error and how these medication errors are defined as any preventable event that can cause or lead to inappropriate medication use. That is very, very important. And uh, maybe we can harm the patient with this medication error. So that may be harmful to the professionals, to the patients and to the, or to the consumers. So I mean it is our duty, moral duty to avoid these type of errors, uh, especially in the insulin treated patients. This is often we do these type of errors. So there are different types of error, dear friends. Uh, the, uh, the errors in the planning in, of an intentional act, known as mistakes. This is a serious affair. Then errors in the execution of an act, known as either slips, that is acts of commission, but which can we do almost on a daily basis. Or sometimes it is a serious lapses, that is act of omission. Then skill-based level, the slips and lapses, rule-based, sometimes we break the rule, uh, we don't know how, how we uh, give the real treatment and prescription to the patients. Sometimes the knowledge-based errors which we do, uh, that is, uh, we don't have, we have the knowledge, but we don't apply when the patient is in front of us. And then medication error we have already seen. So let us start with the very simple and basic things on a day-to-day -day basis is the errors in the clinical examination. And that is most of the time uh, in a busy clinic, we don't uh, measure the height and weight of the patient. And this is, you know that these days we are using GLP-1 receptor agonists, we are using the SGLT2 inhibitors and uh, especially the, the bigonides also. So we must know height and weight for the patient and we should not omit or we should not do this type of. So BMI and height and weight is very, very important. And that is not for the diagnosis, not for the ther therapy, but for the prognosis point of view also this is important. Then the features of insulin resistance, which is very commonly, we can just look in uh, of the insulin resistance and we can devise or design our medi uh, medications according to that. Then waistline, most of the times we don't measure. And of course, the peripheral pulses, often we miss. These days, after COVID, we don't see the virtual patients. Uh, we see the virtual patient. Unfortunately, we miss most of the clinical examination, which we have learned during our um, uh, medicine days. So the brood, which is very blue, which is very, very important. It is a surrogate marker of the coronary artery disease. Sometimes we miss, and sometimes the renal brew, uh, because we are giving the ACE inhibitors and ARBs to the patients, and if we just feel the renal brew, and that is the sign of uh, uh, renal artery stenosis, and in that case, these are contraindicated drugs. So these type of uh, clinical examination. Then foot examination, also this is very, very important. Uh, last RSSDI, we have already uh, Dr. Vishay Vishwanathan already has a big drive for the diabetic foot examination and uh, I mean this is how we can make the people or doctors aware of the foot examination. This is very, very important. 
uh, hand most of the time sometimes if we examine the hands that trigger finger and sometimes we just know the some of the clinical uh, diagnosis just by examination and of course fundus uh, is again sometimes a screening and uh, I have few patients where by just screening I, I seen just few days back one patient just by screening I found that the papilledema is there patient has no problem at all and I find the, the, the I found that papilledema is there and that lady I then referred to the neurologist and ultimately that uh, found to the brain tumor and she was operated. So just for a screening that is a painless examination and we can do, I mean we can diagnose so many diseases. A right choice is very, very important. Who should be on the tight control? That is important thing. Like young diabetes with, uh, without comorbidities, we should have as less as 6.5 or even 6% 6 of HbA1c. For gestational diabetes, I need not to emphasize that this is very, very important that we have to be a very tight diabetes control, uh, blood sugar around 80 fasting and uh, less than 120 milligram percent of the post prandial. Uh, post renal transplant patients also need a very tight glycemic control or and of course during the intensive uh, ICU and the patient on stroke, the blood sugar should be around 140 to 180 milligram percent. Of course, in monitoring most of the times, uh, do we do ask our patients to do the self-monitoring of the patients, but they must know the frequency of monitoring. And this is how we all know about this thing that glycosylated hemoglobin or HbA1c should be done within uh, three months, lipids should be once in a year or if very high triglycerides or something and we are on some drugs, then it, we can think of even six months uh, uh, in a year. Then microalbuminuria, fundus, foot examination, we should know the real uh, timelines, how we are going. And this is one of the very important thing that prescriptions error. This is an important thing in which we do uh, on a, uh, I mean, uh, frequently like especially this insulin uh, error and if you see here in the insulin error here that what you are seeing here just see here the doctor writes here the uh, this is four units but he writes the four u here and again four u and four u unfortunately this is the real patient and patient received 44 units twice a day this is how the the, the errors are being committed and similarly here when he's writing, uh, he wrote the uh, 100 units, I mean uh, this is actually to be un uh, 10 units but unfortunately he wrote the 100 units and patient received 100 units. This is how we have to actually audit our own prescriptions once we are giving just like in the examination. When we give our prescriptions, I mean the, the final sheet, answer sheet, we just read twice. I mean at least once. Similarly, if we read once before giving, uh, handing over our prescriptions to the patient, sometimes we may know about these type of errors. Anybody who tells what is the, uh, why I have shown this particular sort of uh, prescription here? Anybody? Is anything error here? Yes, yes. I think you have already seen and I have taken from that. I mean, this is a thing and this is very commonly, this is, I don't know whether it is involuntary being done and these days because these are combination drugs or FDC drugs are available and probably we don't know the in interior content of that thing and think that this is a one tablet and this galvasmet is one tablet. We, now we are giving two types of DPP-4 inhibitors in this patient. So these type of errors are we are committing on a day-to-day -day basis. Then of course, what is our target? We should know our target. I mean, giving the target to the patients and we know about all these things. I'm not going to the details. These are just studies, published studies and where we can actually uh, remit our, uh, I mean, we can correct or revise our things. Like this is one of the studies which says that depending on the different types of HbA1c, 
how much error we are committing. This is one study where if patients are on less than 7%, 33% errors are we, uh, we have committed. Even though patients are at goal, patient is having 7%, but the errors are we are doing. If we are around at 7 to 7.79, the goals are reachable here. I mean, these type of errors, and I'll not go into the details again, lipids, as far as lipids are concerned, we never look into the different types of lipids and how to manage. And now, if you see the errors we are committing, this is the international publication. Regarding the treatment strategies, uh, lifestyle modification, we should know that how we educate our, motivate our patients for doing the lifestyle modifications. At least once the patient is obese or even uh, mildly overweight, then we should aim for 5% weight loss and at least we must know and we should give this target to our patients. And of course, for all other things, we should know details of the lifestyle modification to the patients. Then again, this is very important thing. Whenever we are prescribing the oral anti-diabetic drugs, we should know when a drug should be given. Metformin is always, I mean, it is always better to give Bef just before or just with meal or just after meals to reduce the gastrointestinal uh, intolerance. Of course, SGLT2 inhibitors, I mean, preferably should be given in the morning because sometimes the frequency of urine is uh, more uh, after SGLT2 inhibitors. Hence, it is preferably SGLT2 inhibitors to be given in the morning. Uh, if we are erroneously give SGLT2 inhibitors in the evening, then it is actually difficult for the patients because in the night he has to wake up several times. Sulfonylurea again, at least 25 to 30 minutes before, preferably DPP-4 inhibitors before meals. And I think we must know about the insulin, when the insulin should be given, especially the, the, the earlier insulin, human insulin, that should be given 30 minutes before, I mean regular insulin or soluble insulin before, 30 minutes before the uh, meals. So that is how uh, we should know the timings. Then the storage, again this is very, very important, that we never advise our patients, especially in Rajasthan I know, most of the patients take the insulin, I mean they, they go to the village and they keep the insulin uh, just in the open or uh, in the hearts or uh, in their uh, houses and most of the time bioavailability of those insulin actually reduces and the whole purpose of giving insulin is foiled. Uh, so I mean this is the important thing, the how to storage and uh, this is very important especially when the traveling we should advise the proper storage uh, about the insulin. Dosing errors still the syringes are available and we all know that 40 and 100 IU syringes are always there and mix and match insulins are there. Chemists give some different types of insulin syringes to the patient. Patient doesn't know what type of syringes they have to buy. It is 40 IUs with the 40 IU vial or 40 IUs, uh, 100 IU syringe with the 100 IU vials. So I mean that is very, very important thing. The dosing errors may be minimized if we educate our patients. So this is again related to injections and some novel idea you always see with the patients that sometimes they, write, uh, they take insulin injection at anywhere else in the body and some of the forearms, if you see here, the patients actually take the insulins regularly on the forearms. Doctor doesn't know about that thing. Cleaning is again very important. Sometimes we don't use the, the good cleaning before the injections and you find these type of infections. Faulty injection techniques, we have to educate our patients for the proper injection techniques to actually uh, reduce these type of lipohypertrophy or lipohypotrophy. Repeatedly, I have seen some patients that repeatedly they inject on the same sites. That is very, very, I mean, uh, distressing for me for uh, or for the patient because bioavailability if the injection on the same site, it reduces tremendously. Special precautions, actually the pen users again, the, the important two things here, the pen should not be stored 
uh, with the needle. So needle should be removed before the uh, if we store. That is one thing. Second thing uh, regarding the 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 uh, again we should not store these uh, pans into the uh, inside the freezer compartment. Uh, of course, insulin should not be in the freezer compartment. So these two things are important. So there are different strategies. The only thing is strategy is to provide the education. Once he told in the morning that it is the for the type 1 diabetes and for all diabetes patients, I think providing good education will increase your therapeutic uh, uh, efficiency. Decision support, the changing, if you are not finding the good thing, change your team or uh, educate your team or train your team, that is very important thing. And regular audit of your own prescriptions, that is my take home message today, that regular audit, do your regular audit of your own prescriptions. Uh, policy. So the only thing is again, some stressful situations, uh, what to do during those stressful situations, and on the last, do not chase the blood sugar. That is what we are doing on a, in, a host, in a hospitalized patients, even for the diabetes, I mean the patients themselves, they actually just chase their blood sugar. That is the wrong policy. It is a highly individualized uh, art of medicine of practicing diabetes. So we must know all these things. So dear friends, insulin prescribing errors are very, very commonly seen, all not only here, but all over the globe. Many strategies that could prevent the, the harm and use of insulin is just by simplifying and standardizing the many processes. Uh, so you just standardize or do your own, uh, I mean, the, the uh, inspection of your own prescriptions, all your own policies in the hospitals. So key takeaways is nothing very special. The only thing is that the, if you want to improve the compliance and everything, see of your everything what I have shown here, the minimum or uh, the, these types of errors. So to err is the human and building a safer health system and what Henry Ford says, the only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. Thank you very much.